So go ahead and place yourself in your morning actions after this conversation. Sort of glaring at Eldov. Wait, really? Eldov is a little <laughs> taken aback by this. He just unearthed an assassin at your church. He thought you would care a little bit more about that, but, you know. <laughs> I'm going to tag along with Eldov wherever he's going. Okay. Where are Eldov's going to go talk oh, well, to Fred. I'll ask, I'll ask you, where are you going? Eldov's going to go talk to Fred. Okay. Fred is number four, not 13. And was Cleo was going up to the keep, yes? Yes. Okay. I don't want to go. Eric, do you um, do anything at the church besides your repentance? Um, after I after repentance, uh, I try to find the um, the groundskeeper. Oh, I'm gonna like... go. With, I'm gonna go with Eric actually. Okay. Orphan is granted access to the church as long as she comes in with Eric. If she comes in after the right. fact. <laughs> so, but if she goes with Eric, and I mean, it's not very exciting because he says like an hour's worth of repentance prayers. <laughs> By the way, as far as you know, Orphan wasn't there, right? Right. He only he's, yeah. he's suspicious of Eldov, but yeah, because I Eldov's not a fucking narc. Like <laughs> Eldov's is a bro Eric, apparently to the end of days. That's true. Well, I mean, technically, Eldov is Eric's employer, so <laughs> or one of Eric's employers, considering. Eldov is an he's officer still, on the ship. He's that... still lawful good and just lied to a superior. Like, and you feel very bad about it. That speaks to your character, sir. That's why he's repenting for a good so, hour. Do I see repent- the anyway. here while I'm here? You do not. Okay. And oh, if you really? ask, if you ask, uh, it's because he was awake most of last night. He is currently sleeping. All right. Oh, all right. He's well, an old. He was an old. He's an old man and. He has, has old man problems. Slim constitution, and he was uh, uh, didn't get much sleep last night because he spent almost all last night walking the grounds of the church with his crossbow, in Running like the keeping the watch, essentially watching the sky. <laughs> crossbow, huh? And a couple of hours before dawn, one of the acolytes finally managed to convince him to go back inside and go to bed. Okay. Um. All right. Well, we'll go talk to him later then. I mean, you can ask somebody to go wake him up if you want to talk to him now. But what does Orphan do what? while Eric is saying prayers? He's sitting there. So no, but what? So yeah. So my plan for this is, I want to talk to. Is there is there anyone who's like, who who's there at the gate when we when we enter? There are actually city guards stationed at the gate when you get there. But I mean, the okay. church is not closed by the time you get there. The sun's already up. Uh, the church is already open to the public. All right, I want to I want to talk to a church official, not a guard. Now, if I see any any here, most likely that would be Basil the curate. Okay, is is he around? Uh, if you ask for him, yeah, one of the acolytes can bring him down, and you're known to be one of Eric's party. Okay, and Basil knows of you because Harmon would have spoken of you. Okay, and so yeah, while, while Eric is praying, Basil comes down and greets you. I'm gonna I'm gonna offer to Basil to um, I'll explain to him that and this is a bluff by the way. Okay. I'll explain to him that um, my kind has a certain type of uh, of magical sight, and and I'll I'll offer to um, go have a look around the grounds to see if I can turn up something that uh, their own number couldn't see. Make a deception check. Mm-hmm. Let's see if you can convince him that that's true. Not a nat 20, just a 20. Okay. Boom. And he seems slightly Boom. taken aback at the explanation. And he seems like he's considering something, like he's weighing something very heavily. Mm-hmm. And eventually he nods and says, I, I see the wisdom in that. He says, I'm sure Harmon would prefer to not uh, include any kind of devilish perception, meaning no offense, of course in the course of our investigation, but I, I, I see the wisdom in what you say. I say, um, yeah, I'll, I'll nod to that. I say, no, no offense taken. Um, if, you're, if you're worried about it, um, my, my friend is a priest of Ostrom, and I'm sure he can vouch for me. Uh, right now, Eric is very deep in prayer. Do you interrupt him? No, I'm, I'm not going to interrupt him, but I'm, I'm just going to motion over to him like with my head. It's like that, like that guy over there. He's, he's my friend. And you name drop Eric, and Basil nods and says, Brother Eric is known to us. He's uh, done great services for the church in just the short time he's been here. 
He says, I can't promise that I can get you access to everywhere in the church, but he says, I'll, I'll be happy to walk you around the grounds. I see that. That sounds most fair. I'll see, I'll see what I can find for you. Okay, and he starts by leading you out the door of the church and leads you back around uh, the outer wall, back out to the graveyard where the mausoleum is. And, I mean, if you leave it up to him, he's going to do all the outside areas first. He's going to take you on into the barn and... Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'll, I'll let him lead away. I just want to see what I can see around here. Okay, and so he takes you back around the graveyard, uh, back around the stone mausoleum. Uh, you walk the around the barn, and you go inside to the barn, uh, and then you walk to the side building, the structure where the groundskeeper stays. And he stops at the door, and he turns... Says, is there any need to disturb Lothar? I say, um, it's hard to tell from here. Maybe if we could open the door just a bit. He, he says, I don't have a key to the door. We'd have to wake Lothar up. He could open the door from within. Shall I knock? I say, well, I'm, I do have a bit of a busy day. I need, I'm needed elsewhere. There's something uh, going on with my ship, so... Now is probably the best time. And he nods, and he knocks on the door. And after a few moments, you hear the lock uh, undone inside and open up. And Lothar is standing there in his bedclothes. And he looks out at uh, Basil, and Basil explains the situation. He says, uh, Madam Orphan here has offered to help us investigate the strange happenings from last night. And Lothar looks you up and down, and you see just this look of just disgust on him. I'll, I'll tell him, um, you can even go back to sleep for this, I didn't mean to, uh, to rouse you. Um, I can do my bit in silence. And he doesn't say anything, and he doesn't nod. He just turns back into the room, and walks back over to his bed, and he sits down on it. And he just watches you as you enter. All right, I'll look around, and I'm looking for any any signs of Lothar possibly being an assassin. Okay, give me just one second. Let's find out what you see, if anything. So I do have a description of Lothar's room, I think. How many magic items does he have? How many hats? <laughs> so How many hats? many. <laughs> How many hats does he have? Uh, it's actually just a very small bedroom. Uh, he's not, he doesn't even have a bed. He has a cot that he's sitting on. Uh, hanging on two of the walls are large battered target shields. And it has the word target in quotes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Did only other... Get painted on them? I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. It's just, it's, they're, they're target shields with air quotes. Uh, the only other furniture in the room shields. is a small wooden chair sitting in the middle of the room. It's just these two shields, the cot that he's sitting on, and his chair. <coughs> Excuse me. And he has a door leading outside. Don't trip over those wires, Peanut. Okay, thank God. Oh, <laughs> Every time Peanut walks across the room, I, I, I know one day she's going to trip on a wire and yank my microphone to the ground. And it's going to be awful. <laughs> I'm going to have to drive her dumb ass to the emergency room. And also the microphone. Yeah. So, uh, I Google target shield, and all I'm getting is stuff from uh, Dark Souls. Okay, that Fair works. Enough. I thought it was going to lead you to target.com. <laughs> uh, I'm also getting Captain America shield. Orphan, mm -hmm. roll a perception check. And, okay. and tell me where exactly you're looking in the room. Uh, the only entrance to the room goes back outside. There's not an entrance from this room into the main building of the church. So, wait, so before I rolled, that was my roll. I was just dropping the dice. Okay. Um, oh, that's so convenient, rolled, that seven. <laughs> um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so so you said the things in the room, there was a chair, there was, like, uh, a couple target shields on the wall. What else do I see, like, just on a cursory glance? He's sitting, there's a cot that he, that he sleeps on, and right now he's sitting on it. That's it. Okay. Cot, chair, two target shields, one on uh, opposing walls. One of the, one wall would be facing outside into the yard. Once one wall would be facing inside into the church. Okay, um, I'm going to be focusing on the cot. Okay. Nice. 
So perception, and I get 21. You're glancing around the room, trying to notice anything, and you're paying special attention to the cot, and it is literally just a cloth cot. And when Lothar sees that you're investigating it closely, he grunts and he stands up with some difficulty and moves out of the way. So you have better access to view it. And, I mean, you can clearly see there's nothing underneath it. Doesn't look very comfortable. Okay. All right, so um, I, I thank Lothar for his time, and I move to leave. Okay. And Basil's still standing at the doorway outside, and Lothar, again, just does not say anything. He just sits back down on the cot and watches you go. Okay. All right, where does Basil take me next? Um, takes you back inside the church, through the uh, ground floor area, the main floor of the church. I'll ask him if he can show me the doors that flew open. He says, as long as Harmon doesn't stop us, yes. And he motions to the back of the area, back behind where Eric is praying. Takes you up the stairs to the second floor, and this layout up here looks pretty familiar to you. Yeah. <laughs> you have the hallway that goes down. One of the left-hand doors of this hallway would go to the ladder leading up to the bell tower, and the door at the far end would lead into a small antechamber, off of which are Harmon and Harper's uh, rooms. And it's in this small antechamber that Basil takes you into. And then you've got, off to the left, you've got both doors closed, one leading into Harmon's room and one leading into Harper's. And Harmon's is closed. And he points at Harper's and says, that's the door that flew open. That's the door to the high priest's bedchamber. Ah, I see. And that's why you think that there was an attack on his life? And he nods. Interesting. Do you mind if I have a look? <laughs> and he goes over to the door, and he knocks on it slightly. When there's not an answer from within, he goes ahead and Digs out a key, opens it up. I'm sorry, this door wasn't locked. There's no key. Right. He opens it up, and again, you see the four wheels with big digits painted on them, zero to nine on each one. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of... Yeah. And he looks in, and he says, okay, well, there's nobody in here. It's like, guess it wouldn't hurt. And he stands out of the way so you can enter. All right. Um, I'm just going to look inside the room for a couple of seconds. And you look in, and off to the left, you see a very nice, ornate bed. Uh, the bed posts are carved with barracudas. And you see the symbols of Osprem. Um, and the bed has curtains that are drawn in around it. Harper's not currently here, but this is where he would sleep. Uh, there are several chests in the room, and then the only other, on, the, on the far wall, like I said, you've got these big wooden wheels. Yeah. All right. Um, I make a show of looking at the door itself. Okay. It's like it's like peering at the hinge, at the lock, at the uh, right, right at where the lock would be, at the handle, everything. Okay. Just kind of tutting as I go. So, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are traces here, some kind of uh, thaumaturgical magic, if I'm not mistaken. And <laughs> Basel looks very concerned. He's, what does that mean? I said, oh, it's simply a, uh, it's just something I'm a bit familiar with. Um, I know it when I see it. Roll me a perception check. Mm -hmm. Make it a disadvantage. Okay. DC is 20. What? I don't think I'm going to pass this one then. Nope, I've already failed. Already failed, okay. Yeah. That perception's like plus two. Okay. Oh, well, I guess unless I get the crit on... Well, no, it's still disadvantaged, so... Yeah, yeah you're right. disadvantaged. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, so I failed. Um, and uh, I say... Uh, is, by the way, what are, what are those on the wall, those wheels? And Basil's face kind of flushes red for a moment with embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And I swear to God I'm reading this out of the module. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hello. <laughs> Basil says this is how Harper determines the price of his spells. <laughs> <laughs> he literally spins some wheels? No, <laughs> that's not in the module. Alright, alright. I'll read that's it, because this is okay. great. 
Instead of the normal fees, Harper has four big wheels mounted on the wall of his office. Each wheel is numbered 0 through 9. Harper will spin the wheels to fix the price of the spell. Four <laughs> wheels for 4th and 5th level spells, 0 to 9999 gold. Three wheels for 2nd or 3rd level spells, 0 to 999 gold. And only two wheels for a 1st level spell, 0 to 99. The wheel set the price for the day. It will not change until tomorrow. Balancing the books for the church can be very difficult for Harmon, who has to make ends meet. In fact, <laughs> if arrangements are made through Harmon, he will charge the standard rate. All payments are in advance, of course. So, uh, on hearing this... <laughs> wow! On hearing this, Orphan nods approvingly. <laughs> she, says, she says, I... I admire a man wow. who, who knows when to leave things to chance. I just, I, I, I read this module and I was thinking back to the ancient and exalted order of Harriet yeah. Sue and Chiska, right. and I designed that specifically to be some dumb cartoon shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then this module has this, and there's nothing, there's nothing else this about these works. wheels. That's the only thing these wheels are for. They're not like well, a puzzle like... to be solved. They're not guarding any right. treasure. It's just that's it. <laughs> It's because Har Harper is senile and spins the wheels, and you step right up on the Price is Right. <laughs> so, that, so this was the best and worst thing yeah. I've ever heard. Yes. So and just to, the wheels. just yeah. to complete, the wheel is currently sitting at four thousand four hundred and forty-eight. Just so you know. <laughs> After approving of the wheels, Orphan, Orphan just says, well, um, that's, I think that's all I can tell you of what I've seen so far. Um, I hope that's of some use to you. He says, I'm not really sure. <laughs> so, and he ushers you back out of the room and he closes the door behind him. He says, there was some strangers with the bell, too. The bell tower's over this way. Oh, he, show me that, then. Is there any, anywhere else in the church you wanted to get to? No, I've, okay. I've, I've seen the guards. I've seen the groundskeeper saying I've seen uh, Harper's room. That's pretty much all I'm. She's clean to the crime. Dude. Okay. Yeah. And eventually they take you down into the acolytes' chambers, which are down on the ground floor, mm -hmm. back behind the main, uh, uh, the main room. There are several acolytes' chambers, and then there's a small meeting room here as well. Mm -hmm. where Harper or Harmon uh, would meet with people face-to-face -face, um, for business dealings with the church, arranging payment of spells and that kind of thing. Go ahead and roll me five perception checks in a row. All right. DC is 15. All right, let's see here. Assuming One. you're continuing to uh, look around and you're not just... Yeah, yeah. Okay. One pass. Okay. Two passes. Uh, one fail. Two fails. I think twelve. So close. Oops. Uh, three three passes out of five. So pass, pass, fail, fail, pass. Okay. You don't see anything out of the ordinary. Except, thinking of the layout of the church, mm -hmm. the meeting room that he walks into, very, very tiny room, just big enough for a small table where two people can sit uh, and do church business. They have another larger meeting room upstairs that you walked through briefly, which is where Eric met with Harper before. Uh -huh. This room would be on the opposite wall of Lothar's chambers. If there was a doorway in this room, you would be, instead of walking out of the yard, you would walk into Lothar's room. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all you notice. Okay. Eric, you're, by the time you're done praying, Basil's bringing Orphan back into the main area of the church, having gone on her guided tour. Great. Is your conscience alleviated? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better now. Khalil, <laughs> yo, you approach the keep, yeah. and the guards meet you at the gate, mm -hmm. ask what your business is. Uh, I need to speak with uh, either, what's his name again? Shit. Um, Captain Kalich. of the Guard was... Oh, no, SQ. 
SQ, yeah. that's right. SQ. You, you need to speak with SQ or someone, uh, someone close to his station. And they bring you inside the keep into just the main uh, forward chamber. Mm -hmm. And eventually, Askew is, comes down to meet you. It's Khalil. Good day. What is um, it I can I help you with? I, I wish I could meet. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances, but there's been a disappearance and theft aboard our ship. It happened sometime yesterday. Sorry to hear that. What happened? One of our crew and a keg of very sensitive powder was have disappeared from the ship. This is very sensitive powder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he seems confused by the... He's never heard that particular grouping of words used together before. <laughs> it's a... It's it's an alchemist concoction. It, uh... A little, it's a little volatile from what I've seen. And at this, he summons some of his guards. And he informs you to, uh give your statement to them. Mm -hmm. um, they'll go down and investigate your ship. They'll try to find out what's going on. Okay. Do you have any other designs in the keep, or was that just your intent to pass that, this information That was on? just it. That was just it, yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, you're be, you'll be giving your statements to some of the guards. They send a patrol down to the ship. Down I to the would honor. like to go with them if that's at all possible. Yeah, fine. That's fine. All right. And so you go back down to the ship and... Uh, Balin and Swent don't at all like that you're bringing Garrett and guards on the ship. And there's a short altercation there about is this what Captain Terran would want or not. And eventually the guards are able to put their minds at ease. So they don't like it very much, but they're allowing the guards up on the ship to look around considering the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Elda, what the hell are you doing? No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. God, what the hell is Neville doing? He's standing I just at the. Sent, I sent Brickard a message saying I spent uh, ten minutes casting a ritual before going to the play. I'll tell you what ritual if it comes up because it's funnier that way. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna go and do what at the theater, waiting for tonight's performance? No, I'm I'm going to to speak to uh, my confidants at the theater. I'm gonna go talk to Fred and. Uh, Okay. What's his name? Linus. Linus, Linus. Hopstring, minstrel extraordinaire. Uh, give, give yourself five experience points per card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I had a second edition DM, and every time I did that, he was like, he would laugh. He was. I had him in stitches, and he would grant experience. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> and yeah, Linus is happy to meet with you. I bring them up to speed, including the fact that uh, I saw the, the the groundskeeper acting suspiciously, and I also tell them about the uh, the gnome in the castle and ask if if Linus knows anything about him. And he says, uh, I try to have as few dealings as possible with the creatures in the castle. <laughs> what well, we've heard about theatrical. their dealings, that's understandable. <laughs> so no, he doesn't know anything about the gnome in the castle. Alright. Um, I asked what Fred's take on this is. Fred, does anybody inform Fred that Evander and the powder are missing. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell him. Okay. Lil hasn't run into him. Fred is devastated to hear that Evander is missing. Like, he's very concerned. And he's also very much convinced that there's an Assassin's Guild in town. Of course he is. I'm pretty sure as well. And he asks if there's anything he should be doing. I tell him to, uh... You know what? He might be pretty good at. I asked Fred to go talk to the uh, children at the inn, see what they can, f what he can find out. Tell him to impress them a little with his uh, bardic talents. Fred nods. He says, "I'll see what I can do." 
And then I'll, I'll head out. I think I'm going to head to the castle next. Okay. Going into the afternoon, the guards managed to chase down what they thought was Abraham, but was actually just a fat man wearing Abraham's clothes. <laughs> and they apprehended him and dragged him back to town, and they've got this poor bastard. He doesn't even look that much like Abraham from the front. But they've got him in stocks out in front of the inn. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds legit. <coughs> so the rumor of the sounds day is that awful evil to me. Abraham has managed to make fools out of the guards and evade them and there's a million stories about where he went and where he's hiding. Some say he's hiding in a seashore uh, cave on the opposite side of the lake. Some say that he's got he has a secret passage in the castle and he's hiding right under their noses. Some say that he's a great wizard and he managed to create himself a pocket dimension in the ethereal plane. I am and a great magician. Your clothes are red. The guards of the day are very agitated that apparently he is gone. He just disappeared in the thin air. Out with so, him. So just from asking around town, like, like, casually, what were the sequence of events? Like, Abraham fled and then the guards went after him? Abraham, before sunrise, uh, because you know that the, they were planning to arrest him today. Right. <clears throat> before they had a chance to do that, before sunrise today, Abraham lit out of the inn on one of his horses and ran out of town, making a huge ruckus, like heading down this way. But they were already planning to, to arrest him? Like the guards know that they were already planning to arrest him? Apparently that's the case. Once they realized that Abraham was leaving town, some guards immediately chased out after him. Okay. But the, the man they caught was not Abraham. The man they caught was just a fat man wearing Abraham's clothes and riding Abraham's horse. They brought that man back to town and clapped him in the stocks in front of the uh, keep. So they've got this fat guy clapped down in stocks, probably on this road right here. At the base of the hill. So, word as to... Uh, why they were going to arrest Abraham. Like, there's a lot of rumors flying around. But, clearly, well, you tipped him off, and he put something into motion, so he did not get arrested. And nobody knows where he is now. I'm gonna go uh, talk to Armax. You're gonna go to the keep and if... talk to Armax for afternoon action? Yeah. Okay. Well, that might lead to other things in the castle as an afternoon action, but sure. that's how it's going to start. Sure. What about Eric and Orphan for afternoon? Um, I ask Orphan if he found anything in his investigation. Um, I'll tell Eric that I still let's see. Um, I I'm not I'm not concerned at all about Harper. I don't think that I think he's he's innocent of the uh, of the assassination. Mm -hmm. But. I still have some suspicions about the groundskeeper. I didn't find anything in his room, but like, if I had had more time, I, I tell him that um, I wonder if there might be some kind of passage between his room and the meeting and the uh, the rest of the church. It's a little, it's a little odd. It's not much to go on, but oh yeah, what was that? Like the walls weren't matching up or something? Like, no, he, like he just noticed they, the layout of the wall. church. They share a wall yeah. there. They yeah. share a wall, there, oh, okay. and there was and there was no door, but that's a little that's a little odd, and just like combined with that with what um, she knows from last night about him not actually needing the cane, she has just some suspicions of the of the of the uh, the groundskeeper, and she'll tell all this to Eric, except for the part about um, about her being there last night. <laughs> she, pre <laughs> she presents that as something that is like backing up what uh, Eldiv was saying. Okay. So what's uh, happening right. in the afternoon with you guys? Uh, I let out a heavy sigh. <laughs> all afternoon. I hate. All, yeah, all afternoon. That's all I do. Is I just sigh. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to work on my sermon for a little bit, and then I'm going to head back to the church because this is what I do now. This is what I do with my church. <laughs> and what's Khalil doing this afternoon? Uh, Khalil will be doing whatever he can to help the uh, guards conclude their investigation and hopefully okay i mean there's and then like i said there's really nothing to go on 
Yeah. So the guards look over the ship. Uh, they ask for access to rooms and are denied by Swint and Balin. Like anything that, uh, like they're, they're granted access down to the hold. Um, they're not granted access to the brig, to the treasure room, to the officers' room, to the captain's room. Like the, and the city guard seems a little put off by this, and they keep looking back to you, like you, you dragged us here. all the way the hell out of here for this. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. So there's well, a little there's there's a little bit of friction there, but I mean everybody's yeah. a professional, so yeah. Okay, so we're going to go right. back up to the keep then with Eldov. And you asked for a uh, meeting with Armax, yes? Huh? And Armax is able to make some time for you. Uh, um, am I escorted to Armax? You are escorted back to the... Uh, you're, yeah, you were in this room before. The same room you spoke to her before, where she's sitting up on the dais... I'm just kind of like offhandedly if the the soldier is like escorting me like don't worry I know the way and then if he if he moves to follow me anyway I don't make anything of it I mean yeah like, you're I just you're you're escorted <laughs> okay they, they don't give you free reign of the place all right and when you get into the entryway and you're waiting to be escorted into the meeting room uh Armax appears with Holga. And they're just finishing up a conversation of some kind. And Armax looks up and sees you waiting there and says, Alright, we'll continue our lessons later. And Holga nods and smiles and walks past you and exits the keep. And then Armax turns around and goes into the meeting room. And the soldier motions for you to follow. Alright, I walk in. You walk in and she's sitting up on the... Uh, there were three chairs and she's sitting in the left-hand one. Uh, the, the center one, you presume, would be for the Lady Mayor. And she's sitting up on the dais and says, All right, Eldov, what is it I can help you with? Um, what was it I exactly wanted to talk to her about? Shit, there was something I, I mentioned, but I can't remember what it was at the moment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it completely slipped my mind. And she's, All right, I, good, good talk. <laughs> I, have, I have an action if you want to... <laughs> if you want to do that while you're waiting to remember whatever it yeah, is you're yeah, you for. Alright, all right, let's go back up to Orphan then. So mine really, although mine depends on how much uh, Zook told us. Like, did he tell us about his contact in the Guild of Shadows, who lives right here? He told you about Pliska, but he would have told you that he's not sure how Pliska would take being approached by any of you, since you're not guild members. Okay. Because I was going to go over to Pliska and tell him about our progress so far. I mean, apparently his name's not Pliska. I just did a name for that. A search for that. Priska with an R, not Pliska. Oh, Pris Priska, okay. But yeah, if 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 Zook told me to stay away, then I guess I won't do that. Uh, he didn't say stay away. He would. He just told you he's not sure how he would react if you approach, if you approach yeah, him. Well, it's... okay. In that case, I'll give it a try. And he's not this, in the building when you go there. This is it, right? Actually, it's, he's in 39. Oh, 39, okay. I don't know where that is. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Right here. Um, he's not there, but he's outside. You do find him. He's actually on this path here, where they've got the poor fat bastard in the stocks. And he's sitting across the street from this poor fat bastard, and he's got a basket of rotten tomatoes, and he's shouting out, Two coppers for a tomato! Pass to the fat bastard! And once in a while, somebody comes up, drops a couple coins, picks up one of these tomatoes, and wings it across the road at this poor fat bastard <laughs> in the stocks, who's just covered in rancid tomatoes sick. Lovely. Lovely. And that's where you find him. And he sees you walk up, and he says, Try your luck, miss, two coppers! I'll ask him how, how's the business. And he holds up this little leather sack, and he shakes it, and you hear the ring and coins. His business is booming! <laughs> and I'll ask him, do you uh, have a minute to talk with the customer? 
<laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll toss a couple of, of coins his way. And you throw some... What do you throw in? Uh, I'll throw in a gold. Throw in a gold? And he looks at it, and he grabs it, and he puts it in his mouth and bites down hard on it while he's watching you. <laughs> and then he places it very gingerly in this bag, and he pushes the whole basket of tomatoes over it. <laughs> <laughs> you just bought a basket of rotten tomatoes for a gold. Yeah. D- Adventures are he, a pox on the local economy. Does he? Does he ask? Uh, does he answer my question? He doesn't say anything. He, he's looking at you like very, like, with gratitude. You just gave him a gold piece. That's amazing. Okay. Like, I mean, you have his uh, attention if you wanted to say something. Yeah. I say, um, so I've been working on your problem for my friend, uh, my friend Zook. And you don't even see the look of recognition on his face. Um, I just, I just wanted to say, we're not getting very, we're not really making much progress. Not really getting anywhere. We've eliminated almost all the, sus- almost all the possibilities. And I'll, 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 while I'm doing this, I'll, I'll lob some, some tomatoes underhanded. <laughs> That's the guy? That's the guy. Roll the hit. Oh my god. You gotta say Khalil's dick. Yeah, roll the hit. Okay. <laughs> I'm, it's just like softball throws. I'm not like using her full strength here. 11 to hit. And you hit him. And it hit him square in the face and the tomato explodes and you hear the guy go, Oh, oh. You do D6 of damage, he's dead. He's dead now, yeah. <laughs> Any suggestions for my from where uh, we might follow up on this project? And he's sitting on the ground, rocking back and forth, watching approvingly as you wing a tomato at this, <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> Eventually he looks back up at you. He says, I need to get more tomatoes. He says, I get them from behind the inn, they just throw them away. And he stands up and he heads off towards the inn. Alright, I'll, I'll follow him. And he walks back behind the fence of the inn. Back to this little wooded area here. Where the, the trees come up right against the back fence. <coughs> and he ducks down and there's a little crack in the wall. Just barely big enough for him to squeeze through. And he ducks down and pokes his head into the wall. And you see him look both ways. And then he pulls back out and looks at you. Where, where are you standing? Um, I'm standing a few, a few feet away from him. Okay. And he kind of weighs you closer. Okay, I'll come over. And you get close enough, and he reaches out with both hands, and he grabs your robe. Mm-hmm. What did Zook tell you? I'm working on the investigation with him. I'm looking. I'm looking into the the problem of the uh, of the murder. He said, "How do I know I can trust you?" Hmm. I say, "Well, uh, who else but Zook's allies would even know about uh, your work together?" He says, "Indeed, that little gnome has a big mouth." So he lets go of the robes. Mm-hmm. This is all right. What have you found? And I'll I'll tell him that um, that we've 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 ruled out Linus Harpstring. We've proven uh, he wasn't involved. Okay. Um, we've done a bunch of investigation into uh, into Harper, and we've ruled him out as a suspect. He's okay. he's clearly an an actual doddering old man, not like a master assassin. Okay. Uh, and and I'll say and we um and if uh, I'll, I'll conclude by saying and if if it was Abraham then he skipped town so that leaves us at, uh, at square one. He says yes, Abraham vanished this morning. So what do you know about that? I have to step away for a few minutes, guys. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll say um. We hadn't. We didn't really kind of anything conclusive on him. Um, our investigation so far suggested he was innocent. This is not what I meant. What I meant was, how did he know to skip town? It's 
good question. And do you know the answer? I, I shake my head. No, you actually, you do know the answer. I do know the answer, yeah, so I'm, okay. I'm trying to lie. <laughs> you're, you're telling him you don't. Yeah. Make a bluff check. Okay. That's just deception, right? Yes. All right, that's a 20. 20? Yeah. And he looks at you very suspiciously, and you're not... He, He's having a very difficult time believing you. Mm. I'll just say if if you're if there's nothing I had anything to do with it, I didn't. And that is the truth. Well, then if we know who didn't do it, who did? I say, well, that's what I came to, to, to ask you about. See if you had any suggestions about where to follow up from there. And he shakes his we head. Really, this is all the evidence leads at this point. All the evidence I had, I gave to Zook. Now, I, I, you're lying to him about the leads, too, right? The leads? Actually, I'm not, because um, I don't think that... Uh, I don't think Ev Eldov ever told me about the gnome. But you also have no, Lothar I, I, at the I absolutely told you about the gnome. Oh, okay. So I know about the gnome, and I, I, okay. Well, in that case, if if I do know about um, the couple leads, I'll I'll tell him. I'll go ahead and I'll tell him about the gnome and about the groundskeeper. Okay. By my measure, you yeah, you have Lothar the groundskeeper, uh, Rogan the gnome, and there are some holes in Holga's story that nobody's patched up yet. Yeah. So who do, do you tell him about those three, or do you tell him about one or the other? Uh, I tell him about um, about Rogan and about the groundskeeper. I'll I'll leave out Holga for now. Okay. This is Rogan. Yeah, I know of him. This is a gnome, but he pretends to be a boy when he picks pockets in town. This is alright. I can't imagine he's an assassin, but if it's a place to look, I'll keep my eyes open. Is, oh. as, as for Lothar, I don't have any way of getting on the church grounds. They would turn me away. I say, yeah, I've, I've had similar problems. What about, um, do you know much about Captain Basmar? I know he's a loudmouth and a braggart. I know that the city guard doesn't touch him. Hmm. He's he's had some strange dealings too. We've been coming to cover a couple of unusual facts about uh, the old captain. Such as? Well, he's not a captain. He's so he's we don't so if he's smuggling, we don't know. Um, then he's not doing it the way he claims. There's the strange business of his protection from the city guard. Priscard nods, takes the information in. Says, I may be able to flex some muscle in the direction of the good captain and our gnome Rogan. Says, if I find anything, I'll send someone to give you word. Says, but we can't meet like this again. Understood. And then he, with that, he ducks completely into the uh, crack in the wall and disappears through it. Alright. Uh, Eldov, I think it's your up. You're up. Do you remember right. what you're going to do now? Yeah, I wanted okay. to... Uh, first off, I, I apologize for not making dinner last night. And I Aramex tell her I was accepts busy. the apology. She says that one of your friends took some food home. I hope you got it. Yes, it was delicious. She, she thanked says, the chefs for me. And she nods. And she seems kind of preoccupied, like she's waiting for you to get on with it. Is there any... Who else is in the room? It's just her and you, right now. Alright, I say, uh... I tell her I have a couple of, uh, questions since we've been looking into the murder of the king. Speaking and of... You see this weary look on her face, like, okay, yeah, this... She waits for you to continue. I, I ask if she knows who ordered the innkeeper arrested. She shakes her head and says, I don't know anything about that. I ask her if she knows that her student is planning on skipping town. She kind of squirrels her head sideways. When you mean Holga? That's the one who was just here. What do you mean? 
I was talking to, uh, we questioned a boyfriend of hers over at the the guild of, what, what's the name of it? The, the theater. The theater. <laughs> Wait, who's telling me this? The theater of Mystic Celebration. Is that what my memory sounds like? Yes. <coughs> yes. <laughs> at the theater of Mystic Celebration. And he told us that he's the one who gave her the, uh, the harp that was found next to the murdered king, and in addition, that he was planning on running away with Holga the in the a couple days from now. And you're watching this information hit Armax's face, and it becomes apparent to you like this is the first time she's heard of any of this. She hasn't heard anything about the harp string before. Now she had no idea that Holga had a boyfriend. Like you're telling her this fantastical tale. Well, that'll teach her to act fucking bored, won't it? <laughs> and at the end of it, she says, "I'm not I'm not sure what you're getting at. Are you talk? Are you saying that Holga has something to do with the assassination?" I'm saying that I think she she knows something about it. Yes. She says, "Well, if I mean, if the word was put out to arrest Abraham, clearly Abraham is the chief suspect. Is he the one that did it? He's still at large. Yes. The thing is, is that Abraham. The only uh, evidence that I've heard against Abraham." is that one of his buttons was found at the scene of the crime. And there were several other articles belonging to notable townsfolk found there as well. It makes me believe that if he was the assassin, he wouldn't have planted that there himself. She says, I don't know much about the assassination or the, the investigation looking into it up in Kerr Tyrell, but I was under the impression that no physical evidence was found. Wait, really? Where did, where did this fuck get these things? Did he just take them? The, the Zoot got them from the Guild of Shadows contact. And the Guild of Shadows contact was just like, well, this seems like something I should just take. The Guild of Shadows, when he was speaking to Zook, and Zook would have told you this as well, the reason that they took the evidence is because they didn't trust anybody else to do the investigation properly. So the Guild of Shadows took it upon themselves to conduct it. That's why none of the other authorities know about these physical evidence. Well, fuck, that's not very helpful. <laughs> The shadows is not doing us a solid here. <laughs> All right. Well, the flip side of that is if they had taken that evidence and it is somebody high up um, running the Assassin's Guild, it would have just been swept under the rug and would have never come to light. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I give her like just the, the quick kind of glance by that I've been giving everyone about this like oh we were given it to it by contact okay. and ever and the people who uh, lost these items have confirmed that they were lost before the crime happened this is in one of the which items is true in two of the three she says in one of the items was Abraham's button yes and another one was the harp string of go ahead break I don't remember his name Mom break <laughs> And she says, well, if, uh, if Abraham, if someone tipped him off to the arrests and they have the evidence that they were going to arrest him in the first place and he is, has indeed fled the town, apparently, it seems to me like the culprit's already been found. It has to have been Abraham. So I'm I say, here's loath the thing, to admit though, it. is that, uh, according to my companions, as of last night, nobody... Uh, believe was willing to believe that there was an assassin's guild in town, and how, or had reason to suspect Abraham. And yet, somebody sent someone over to investigate him or to arrest him early this morning. And I have reason to believe he didn't do it. So whoever went to arrest him probably has some motive for doing so. And you kind of see look of concern on Armax's face. Like you're kind of speaking above her pay grade. And eventually, she stops you. She says, "I really think if you have." these kinds of concerns, if you have any other evidence to present, you should probably speak to the Lady Mayor herself. I say, I, I'm i willing to do so, but before I do, would you mind helping me uh, question Holga? She says, I would very much not be comfortable doing that. She's, She's your student. I feel that if, the, if she has some kind of excuse for what happened... Uh, she might be more willing to tell it to someone she trusts, like you. Roll a persuasion check. 
I'll just steal this dice. And what is it you're asking her to do? Are you asking her to detain Holga? To bring her in here so you can question her? Like, what are you trying just, to make happen here? I, I, I just want her to come with me to perhaps wherever Holga sleeps or whatever, to her room. And help me uh, ask Holga some questions. Okay, so, but you want Armax to do this without summoning anybody else. Right. I okay. mean, unless... How, how'd your persuasion check go? Uh, it's a 21. 21. That's a pretty good check. She sits there in silence for a long time. And eventually she nods and says, if there's any validity to what you say, I would be remiss if I didn't look into it. And um, just in passing, before we go ask, I'm going to ask her about the, the other person I have information about, Rogan. And she doesn't know much about, about Rogan. Rogan is uh, a gnome that does odd jobs around the castle. They have him slop out the stables sometimes. Uh, he spends a lot of time out in town. He doesn't have an official role. He just kind of does odd jobs around the place. Okay. Um, and she tells you that she can bring you downstairs to the students' chambers. Let me get my notes, huh? Let's make sure I'm in the right spot. Yeah, she takes you downstairs and through a series of stone passageway and uh, one of the passageways you know leads off to the left to what looks like a jail and she warns you the answer is this is, we have uh, the lady mayor her, her jailer is an ogre says, as long as we don't make any sudden moves or loud noises he knows better than to attack and you look off to the left into the jail cell door, which is closed and locked right now, as she points and said he would be in there asleep right now, I imagine. And she brings you down to the end of this hallway, and turns to the right, and leads you into a small room. Uh, it has two beds, one on the south wall, I'm sorry, one on, one on the east wall, one on the north wall. Um, a couple of chests on either side of the door after you enter. And there's a large cabinet in between the two beds. A uh, reading table in the center of the room with a couple of chairs. And she raps on the door a few times, and then once she realizes nobody's inside, she opens it up, looks around, says, well, this is Holga's room. She shares it with one of the uh, clerical students. She's not here now, but I could send a guard to fetch her. We'll wait, she we'll wait here for her. I say, okay. And that happens. In a few more moments, the guard comes back with Holga. And Holga kind of looks back and forth between the two of you. And she says, Lady Armax, what's what's the matter? Armax stands up and closes the door. Motions for Holga to sit down at the table. She says, Eldov here would like to ask you some questions. Concerning some rather heavy subject matter. And then she looks over to you. All right. Uh, by the way, in the previous, like, whatever, while uh -huh. we're waiting, I cast the uh, Eagle Splendor or whatever. Okay. So let me just tick my sheet. What are the components of that spell, and when did you cast it? I cast it while we were waiting, and the components are none. What do you mean none? Well, I mean, well, like, verbal, somatic, and my ring. Okay, so, but it's clear to Armex that you cast a spell. Uh, yes, and I, if she asks, I tell her it's just to make me more persuasive. And she nods. And so, yeah, you've got Holga in the room there. And it's the same girl that you made out with last night. Does she look any different in the light? No, awkward. Yeah, she's pretty young, 19-year-old girl. Blonde hair, blue eyes. 